Hi, this is Tom Robertson from White Box Learning, and the purpose of this rather informal presentation is, is to communicate some changes that we're making to the green car application this summer uh, and specifically communicate those to our Project Lead the Way teachers who will be training this summer. Um, we have lots of, of plans in, in store or changes in store for the green car application. Um, but m most of those changes that you'll you'll see in the fall are pretty obvious, pretty intuitive. Um, so if you've worked with the application before and you're familiar with it, uh, you won't have any difficulty with it. But there is one major change that um, we have actually already completed and already released into production, and that's the main reason for this presentation. We need to communicate that to you before you go into training. That change has to do with the uh, solar charging station. So let's take a look at the teacher control center first. Uh, I'm in the teacher control center. I'm looking at specifications for green car. You'll see down here that there is a new setting for solar charge date and there's a drop down list with a date in it. At the moment there's only one date which is May 18. Uh, when you come back in the fall there will be several dates to choose from. But this um, new setting is replacing uh, what was test range scenario. Test range scenario just indicated to students that they were to place their solar panel in the salt flats on race day and they had a certain amount of time, an hour and a half, two hours, three hours, to charge their solar panel. We didn't feel that that was really doing a very good job of, of communicating the earth sciences uh, element and, and the significance of earth sciences as it relates to solar energy. So that's the main reason for this change and the, the significance of that will be more obvious as I go back to the application. So in specifications look for solar charge date uh, rather than test range scenario. Now back in the application the students um, will go into the engineering section and now they'll see quite a bit more under charging station. There's charge date, there's solar panel, and there's battery circuit. When they select charge date, they'll see the Earth orbiting the Sun, and it will stop on the date specified by you in the Teacher Control Center. So now we're looking at the Earth from the Sun on May 18th. I'll move down to solar panel and the first thing you'll see here on the left is the same image of the earth rotating about its axis on May 18th as if we were standing on the sun. But what you'll also see now is a little red dot on some location on the earth as it makes its way um, or, or as it comes into and, and goes out of daylight. Now if I open the work area for this I can see that my location is Havana and that in fact is where the red dot is. Now I have six different locations to choose from and this is this is what the student is, is or one of the items that the student is, is actually addressing now. Um, their challenge is to pick the best location on that particular date for collecting uh, their solar charge. They have Cape Town South Africa, Havana, London, Singapore, Sydney, Australia, and Washington, D.C. to choose from. Um, I'll pick Sydney just so that you'll see how, see how things change now. Now our location is Sydney, Australia, and we see a lot going on as Sydney, Australia comes in and goes out of daylight. Now I've got Washington, D.C., same story. Um, now let's move on to our celestial sphere here. The celestial sphere, the item in the center, really is sort of the opposite of our first image on the left because it shows us the location of the sun with respect to our location on earth. And as the uh, our location comes into sunlight we see this red line representing the azimuth of the sun throughout the day and the blue line represents the elevation of the sun throughout the day. So hopefully this celestial sphere 
it will help students understand what azimuth and elevation are. Hopefully the, these two 3D images together will also help them develop a better understanding of why elevation and azimuth are what they are, which of course has to do with the earth sciences, the earth rotating about a 23, uh, uh, rotating about its axis, which is on a 23 and a half degree tilt in orbiting the sun. Um, the third area of our screen uh, is our charts. Now we see a sun chart, a cloud cover chart, which brings weather into the picture, which of course is quite important. And then our actual, our potential and actual solar charge. So if we look at sun chart, um, you'll also see when you mouse over, this is a more helpful graph. Um, but this is plotting azimuth uh, and elevation throughout the day. And as you can see here, it, it's showing that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Um, you'll see that the maximum elevation for Washington DC on this date is about 65 degrees. That's important because for our ma a maximum solar charge for our solar panel, which we see here in the celestial sphere, will occur when, when the solar panel is, is optimally aligned with the location of the sun. So I'm going to theorize that if I set my solar panel at the maximum elevation for that date, that I'll get a better charge. I think my azimuth is set where I want it to be at 180. If we were looking at Sydney, Australia, for example, the sun would be north of our location, so I would change my azimuth to zero. And now our solar panel would be pointing north. But we're in Washington, D.C., so I want my panel pointing south. The next thing we'll look at is cloud cover. So on this particular date in Washington, D.C., we have 15% cloud cover. Finally, uh, solar charge. This, all of these graphs, the celestial sphere, the, the, earth, the rotating earth are all synchronized obviously. Um, but so you'll see here under solar charge that we're seeing the, the actual charge throughout the course of the day. Um, and the blue line shows us the potential charge. The red line actually shows us the actual charge. So our potential charge for Washington DC on that date for a full 24 hour period um, is about 8 amps. The actual charge is something less than that and it's less than that because we have cloud cover. If there were no cloud cover at all the potential and actual charge would be the same. So over the course of a day uh, in this case we're able to collect looks like about 6.9 amps in Washington DC. Now this is going to differ from one lo lo location to the next, of course. So the student's challenge now is to pick the best location and then also not just pick the best location but, but dial in the, the, the best settings for azimuth and elevation for those different locations to maximize their charge on, their, on that date. And we like this a lot better than what we had before for a number of reasons which are hopefully pretty obvious. But this, this brings in the earth sciences much, much better. Um, certainly brings in weather and, and, and really just requires that students put a lot more thought into what's going on here. Why azimuth and elevation are what they are, why weather matters, etc. So now let's go take a look back here at battery circuit. Now that we have so much more flexibility with the solar panel, we are potentially collecting a much higher charge than what we had before. So it's also necessary to have more options on our battery circuit. So now you'll see that you have up to, you have options of up to six batteries, uh, each battery set being in series and then parallel combinations for these um, sets of batteries. So we have up to six batteries in a series parallel combination. You have lithium and nickel metal hydride to choose from. I believe we'll also um, add uh, another battery option which you'll see in the fall. 
but as you make these changes you'll see over here the the potential charge so with nickel metal hydride and six batteries I have a potential charge of 7.8 with lithium it's 9 and of course all this changes as we change our different combinations so students will also have to put some thought into what battery circuit they want to have to take the most advantage of their good choices in, in the solar panel um, this is also nice because as we add new or more batteries the mass of this is, is going up quite a bit as is the cost so there are some really significant trade-offs that come with this as well so we're, we're excited about that a couple of other things to point out um, we did have performance under analysis that was the only thing we had now we have um, an item called temporal graphs or time-based graphs this is showing us all the same graphs that we had before uh, but each is an independent graph each is interactive in that we can use our mouse to investigate the graphs a little better than before otherwise the tutorials for these graphs are, are the same you'll also see items for mass analysis um, which obviously is helpful in understanding how to go about reducing mass um, the, this graph is showing us sources of mass along with all the different components and features that make up a green car so this will help us focus in on where to reduce or raise mass to fall within specifications similarly we have a pretty simple graph here for friction this is showing us the sources of friction so if we want to bring friction down um, this should help students understand where they need to focus their attention and lastly um, I want to point out just a couple of cosmetic changes um, in cargo um, we can you now see uh, an actual trunk and actual people sit, sitting in the car we think this adds a lot um, to the application visually um, and of course you'll also see a new battery pack in here depending on what batteries you've selected so that's about it um, from here the outputs and the salt flat scene are the same you will see more changes as the summer goes on but as I said earlier those changes will be a lot more um, obvious and more intuitive than the changes that you saw on the solar panel here so thanks for listening and um, obviously give us a, a call or an email if you have any questions or concerns.